Djibouti is a country in the Horn of Africa. It is bordered by Somaliland to the southeast, Eritrea and the Red Sea to the north and northwest, Ethiopia to the west and south, and the Gulf of Aden to the east. In antiquity, the territory was part of the land of Punt. The Djibouti area, along with other localities in the Horn region, was later the seat of the medieval Adel and Ifat Sultanates. In the late 19th century, the colony of French Somaliland was established following treaties signed by the ruling Somali and Afar sultans with the French. It was subsequently renamed to the French territory of the Afars and the Issas in 1967. A decade later, the Djiboutian people voted for independence, officially marking the establishment of the Republic of Djibouti. Rock art at Balho the Bab el Mandeb region has often been considered a primary crossing point for early hominins following a southern coastal route from East Africa to South and Southeast Asia. Djibouti area has been inhabited since the Neolithic. According to linguists, the first Afroasiatic speaking populations arrived in the region during this period from the families proposed your Heimat in the Nile Valley, or the Near East. Other scholars propose that the Afroasiatic family developed in situ in the Horn, with its speakers subsequently dispersing from there. The cut stones three million years old, collected in the area of Lake Abe. In the Gabod Plain, the remains of Impaleoloxodon Redski elephant were also discovered, visibly butchered using basalt tools found nearby. These remains would date from 1. 4 million years BC. Subsequently identified other sites of these cuts, probably the work of Homo Gaster. An Aculian site, where stone was cut, was excavated in the 1990s, in Gomborda, between Damarjog and Loida, 15 kilometers south of Djibouti city. Finally, in Gabad, a Homo erectus jaw was found, dating from 100,000 BC. AD on Devil's Island, tools dating back 6,000 years have been found, which were no doubt used to open shells. In the area at the bottom of Gubet, circular stone structures and fragments of painted pottery have also been discovered. Previous investigators have also reported a fragmentary maxilla, attributed to an older form of Homo sapiens and dated to 250 ka, from the valley of the Dagadal Wadi. Geometric design pottery found in Asakoma. Pottery predating the mid-second millennium has been found at Asakoma, an inland lake area on the Gabad Plain. The sites where is characterized by punctate and incision geometric designs, which bear a similarity to the Sabir culture phase 1 ceramics from Maleba in southern Arabia. Long-horned humpless cattle bones have likewise been discovered at Asakoma, suggesting that domesticated cattle were present by around 3,500 years ago. Rock art of what appear to be antelopes and a giraffe are also found at Dora and Balho. Handoga, dated to the 4th millennium BP, has in turn yielded obsidian microliths and plain ceramics used by early nomadic pastoralists with domesticated cattle. The site of Wakrata is a small Neolithic establishment located on a wadi in the tectonic depression of Gabad in Djibouti in the Horn of Africa. The 2005 excavations yielded abundant ceramics that enabled us to define one Neolithic cultural facies of this region, which was also identified at the nearby site of Asakoma. The faunal remains confirm the importance of fishing in Neolithic settlements close to Lake Abe, but also the importance of bovine husbandry and, for the first time in this area, evidence for capron herding practices. Radiocarbon dating places this occupation at the beginning of the second millennium BC, similar in range to Asakoma. These two sites represent the oldest evidence of herding in the region, and they provide a better understanding of the development of Neolithic societies in this region. Up to 4,000 years BC. AD, the region benefited from a climate very different from the one it knows today and probably close to the Mediterranean climate. The water resources were numerous, lakes in the Gabad, Lake Sasol and Abbe larger and resembling real bodies of water. The humans therefore lived by gathering, fishing and hunting. The region was populated by a very rich fauna, felines, buffaloes, elephants, rhinos, etc. As evidenced, for example, by the bestiary of cave paintings at Balho. In the 3rd and 2nd millennia BC, a few nomads settled around the lakes and practiced fishing and cattle breeding. The burial of an 18-year-old woman, dating from this period, as well as the bones of hunted animals, bone tools and small jewels have been unearthed. About 1500 BC. AD, the climate is already changing, water is scarce. Engravings show dromedaries, some of which are ridden by armed warriors. Sedentary peoples return to nomadic life. A stone tumuli, sheltering graves and dating from this period, have been unearthed all over the territory. 
Egyptian Marines from Queen Hatshepsut's Year 9 expedition to the land of Punt, as depicted on her temple at Deir el-Bari. Together with Somaliland, Eritrea and the Red Sea coast of Sudan, Djibouti is considered the most likely location of the land known to the ancient Egyptians as Punt. The Old Territory's first mention dates to the 25th century BC. The Puntites were a nation of people that had close relations with ancient Egypt during the times of Pharaoh Sahur of the 5th dynasty and Queen Hatshepsut of the 18th dynasty. They traded not only in their own produce of incense, ebony and short-horned cattle, but also in goods from other neighboring regions, including gold, ivory, and animal skins. According to the temple reliefs at Deir el-Bahari, the land of Punt at the time of Hatshepsut was ruled by King Parahu and Queen Adi. The Maccabeans were a legendary people and kingdom positioned in the Horn of Africa mentioned by Herodotus. Later authors place them in India instead. It is one of the legendary peoples postulated at the extremity of the known world, in this case in the extreme south, contrasting with the Hyperboreans in the extreme east. Their name is due to their legendary longevity, an average person supposedly living to the age of 120. They were said to be the tallest and handsomest of all men. According to Herodotus' account, the Persian emperor Cambyses II upon his conquest of Egypt sent ambassadors to Macrobia, bringing luxury gifts for the Macrobian king to entice his submission. The Macrobian ruler, who was elected based at least in part on stature, replied instead with a challenge for his Persian counterpart in the form of an unstrung bow, if the Persians could manage to string it. They would have the right to invade his country, but until then, they should thank the gods that the Macrobians never decided to invade their empire. The rule of the Aksumite kingdom may have at times extended to areas that are now within Djibouti, though the nature and extent of its control are not clear. The Sultan of Adal and his troops battling King Yagbisayan and his men. Islam was introduced to the area early on from the Arabian Peninsula, shortly after the Hijra. Zila's two Mikrab Masjid al Kwaiplatan dates to the 7th century, and is the oldest mosque in the city. In the late 9th century, al Yaqubi wrote that Muslims were living along the northern Horn seaboard. He also mentioned that the Adal Kingdom had its capital in Zila, a port city in the northwestern Adal region abutting Djibouti. This suggests that the Adal Sultanate with Zila as its headquarters dates back to at least the 9th or 10th century. According to Iam Lewis, the polity was governed by local dynasties consisting of Somalized Arabs or Arabized Somalis, who also ruled over the similarly established Sultanate of Mogadishu in the Benadir region to the south. Adal's history from this founding period forth would be characterized by a succession of battles with neighboring Abyssinia. At its height, the Adal Kingdom controlled large parts of modern-day Djibouti, Somaliland, Eritrea, and Ethiopia. Between Djibouti City and Loida are a number of anthropomorphic and phallic stele. The structures are associated with graves of rectangular shape flanked by vertical slabs, as also found in Tia, central Ethiopia. The Djibouti Loida stele are of uncertain age, and some of them are adorned with a T-shaped symbol. Additionally, archaeological excavations at Tia have yielded tombs. As of 1997, 118 stele were reported in the area. Along with the stele in the Hadiya zone, the structures are identified by local residents as Yegrandinghe or Grand Stone, in reference to Imam Ahmad ibn Ibrahim al-Ghazi, ruler of the Adal Sultanate. The Ifat Sultanate was a medieval kingdom in the Horn of Africa. Founded in 1285 by the Walashma dynasty, it was centered in Zila. Ifat established bases in Djibouti and Somaliland, and from there expanded southward to the Amar Mountains. Its Sultan Umar Walashma is recorded as having conquered the Sultanate of Shewa in 1285. Tadisa Tamrat explains Sultan Umar's military expedition as an effort to consolidate the Muslim territories in the Horn, and much. The same way as Emperor Yekuno Amlak was attempting to unite the Christian territories in the highlands during the same period. These two states inevitably came into conflict over Shewa and territories further south. A lengthy war ensued, but the Muslim sultanates of the time were not strongly unified. Ifat was finally defeated by Emperor Amdase on the 1st of Ethiopia in 1332, and withdrew from Shewa. Governor Abu Baker ordered the Egyptian garrison at Sagalo to retire to Zila. The cruiser saint Alay reached Sagalo shortly after the Egyptians had departed. French troops occupied the fort despite protests from the British agent in Aden, Major Frederick Mercer Hunter, who dispatched troops to safeguard British and Egyptian interests in Zila and prevent further extension of French influence in that direction. On April 14, 1884 the commander of the patrol sloop Linferent reported on the Egyptian occupation in the Gulf of Tajura. 
The commander of the patrol sloop Le Vaudreuil reported that the Egyptians were occupying the interior between Obok and Tajura. Emperor Johannes IV of Ethiopia signed an accord with the United Kingdom to cease fighting the Egyptians and to allow the evacuation of Egyptian forces from Ethiopia and the Somali coast ports. The Egyptian garrison was withdrawn from Tajura. Leonce Lagarde deployed a patrol sloop to Tajura the following night. French Somaliland In 1922 the boundaries of the present-day Djibouti nation-state were established during the scramble for Africa. It was Rachid Terracourt's exploration into show that marked the beginning of French interest in the Djiboutian coast of the Red Sea. Rachid Terracourt acquired the town of Tajura from the king of Shewa in 1842. The problem was that this king was not the owner of Tajura, but a local sultan who did not recognize the purchase contract, further exploration by Henri Lambert. French consular agent at Aden, and Captain Fleury at Delangle led to a treaty of friendship and assistance between France and the sultans of Raida. Tajura, and Gabad, from whom the French purchased the anchorage of Obok in 1862. Growing French interest in the area took place against a backdrop of British activity in Egypt and the opening of the Suez Canal in 1869. Between 1883 and 1887, France signed various treaties with the then ruling Somali and Afar sultans, which allowed it to expand the protectorate to include the Gulf of Tajura. Léonce Lagarde was subsequently installed as the protectorate's governor. In 1894, he established a permanent French administration in the city of Djibouti and named the region Côte Française des Somalis, a name which continued until 1967. The territory's border with Ethiopia, marked out in 1897 by France and Emperor Menelik II of Ethiopia, was later reaffirmed by agreements with Emperor Haile Selassie I of Ethiopia in 1945 and 1954. In 1889, a Russian by the name of Nikolai Ivanovich Achinov, arrived with settlers, infantry and an Orthodox priest to Sigalo on the Gulf of Tajura. The French considered the presence of the Russians as a violation of their territorial rights and dispatched two gunboats. The Russians were bombarded and after some loss of life, surrendered. The colonists were deported to Odessa and the dream of Russian expansion in East Africa came to an end in less than one year. Place Menelik, Djibouti, c. 1905. The administrative capital was moved from Oboke in 1896. The city of Djibouti, which had a harbour with good access that attracted trade caravans crossing East Africa, became the new administrative capital. The Franco-Ethiopian Railway, linking Djibouti to the heart of Ethiopia, began in 1897 and reached Addis Ababa in June 1917, increasing the volume of trade passing through the port. After the Italian invasion and occupation of Ethiopia in the mid-1930s, constant border skirmishes occurred between French forces in French Somaliland and Italian forces in Italian East Africa. In June 1940, during the early stages of World War II, France fell and the colony was then ruled by the pro-Axis Vichy government. British and Commonwealth forces fought the neighboring Italians during the East African campaign. In 1941, the Italians were defeated and the Vichy forces in French Somaliland were isolated. The Vichy French administration continued to hold out in the colony for over a year after the Italian collapse. In response, the British blockaded the port of Djibouti City but it could not prevent local French from providing information on the passing ship convoys. In 1942, about 4,000 British troops occupied the city. A local battalion from French Somaliland participated in the liberation of Paris in 1944. In 1958, on the eve of neighboring Somalia's independence in 1960, a referendum was held in Djibouti to decide whether to be an independent country or to remain with France. The referendum turned out in favor of a continued association with France, partly due to a combined yes vote by the sizable Afar ethnic group and resident Europeans. There were also reports of widespread vote rigging, with the French expelling thousands of Somalis before the referendum reached the polls. The majority of those who voted no were Somalis who were strongly in favor of joining a united Somalia as had been proposed by Mahmoud Harbi, Vice President of the Government Council. Harbi died in a plane crash two years later under mysterious circumstances. In 1960, with the fall of the ruling Dini administration, Ali Aref Burhan, a harvest politician, assumed the seat of Vice President of the Government Council of French Somaliland, representing the UNI party. He would hold that position until 1966. That same year, France rejected the United Nations' recommendation that it should grant French Somaliland independence. In August, an official visit to the territory by then-French President, General Charles de Gaulle, was also met with demonstrations and rioting. 
In response to the protests, de Gaulle ordered another referendum. On March 19, 1967, a second plebiscite was held to determine the fate of the territory. Initial results supported a continued but looser relationship with France. Voting was also divided along ethnic lines, with the resident Somalis generally voting for independence, with the goal of eventual reunion with Somalia, and the Afars largely opting to remain associated with France. However, the referendum was again marred by reports of vote rigging on the part of the French authorities, with some 10,000 Somalis deported under the pretext that they did not have valid identity cards. According to official figures, although the territory was at the time inhabited by 58,240 Somali and 48,270 Afar, only 14,689 Somali were allowed to register to vote versus 22,004 Afar. Somali representatives also charged that the French had simultaneously imported thousands of Afar nomads from neighboring Ethiopia to further tip the odds in their favor. But the French authorities denied this, suggesting that Afars already greatly outnumbered Somalis on the voting lists. Announcement of the plebiscite results sparked civil unrest, including several deaths. France also increased its military force along the frontier. In 1967, shortly after the second referendum was held, the former Côte Française des Somalis was renamed to Territoire Français des Afars et des Isses. This was both in acknowledgement of the large Afar constituency and to downplay the significance of the Somali composition. The French territory of Afars and Isses also differed from French Somaliland in terms of government structure, as the position of governor changed to that of high commissioner. A nine-member council of government was also implemented. During the 1960s, the struggle for independence was led by the Front for the Liberation of the Somali Coast, who waged an armed struggle for independence with much of its violence aimed at French personnel. FLCS used to initiate few mounting cross-border operations into French Somaliland from Somalia and Ethiopia to attacks on French targets. On March 24, 1975 the Front de Libération de la Côte des Somalis kidnapped the French ambassador to Somalia, Jean Guerry, to be exchanged against two activists of FLCS members who were both serving life terms in mainland France. He was exchanged for the two FLCS members in Aden, South Yemen. With a steadily enlarging Somali population, the likelihood of a third referendum appearing successful had grown even more dim. The prohibitive cost of maintaining the colony and the fact that after 1975, France found itself to be the last remaining colonial. Power in Africa was another factor that compelled observers to doubt that the French would attempt to hold on to the territory. In 1976, the French garrison, centered on the 13th Demi Brigade of the Foreign Legion, had to be reinforced to contain Somali irredentist aspirations, revolting against the French engineered Afar domination of the emerging government. In 1976, members of the Front de Libération de la Côte des Somalis, which sought Djibouti's independence from France, also clashed with the Gendarmerie Nationale Intervention Group over a bus hijacking en route to Loida. The FLCS was recognized as a national liberation movement by the Organization of African Unity, which participated in its financing. The FLCS evolved its demands between the request of integration in a possible greater Somalia influenced by the Somali government or the simple independence of the territory. In 1975 the African People's League for the Independence and FLCS met in Kampala, Uganda with several meeting later they finally opted for independence path, causing tensions with Somalia. Ahmed Dini Ahmed proclaiming the Djibouti Declaration of Independence on June 27, 1977. A third independence referendum was held in the French territory of the Afars and the Isses on May 8, 1977. The previous referendums were held in 1958 and 1967, which rejected independence. This referendum backed independence from France. A landslide 98. 8% of the electorate supported disengagement from France, officially marking Djibouti's independence. After independence the new government signed an agreement calling for a strong French garrison, though the 13 DBLE was envisaged to be withdrawn. While the unit was reduced in size, a full withdrawal never actually took place. In 1981, Abtiden turned the country into a one-party state by declaring that his party, the Rassemblement Populaire pour le Progrès, was the sole legal one. Clayton writes that the French garrison played the major role in suppressing further minor unrest about this time, during which Djibouti became a one-party state on a much broader ethnic and political basis. A civil war broke out in 1991, between the government and a predominantly Afar rebel group, the Front for the Restoration of Unity and Democracy. The Frid signed a peace accord with the government in December 1994, ending the conflict. 
two Fruit members were made cabinet members, and in the presidential elections of 1999 the Fruit campaigned in support of the RPP. Abtiden resigned as president 1999, at the age of 83, after being elected to a fifth term in 1997. His successor was his nephew, Ismail Omar Ghele. On May 12, 2001, President Ismail Omar Ghele presided over the signing of what is termed the final peace accord officially ending the decade-long civil war between the government and the armed faction of the Fruit. Led by Ahmed Dini Ahmed, an Afar nationalist and former Gould political ally. The peace accord successfully completed the peace process begun on February 7, 2000 in Paris. Ahmed Dini Ahmed represented the Fruit. In the presidential election held April 8, 2005, Ismail Omar Ghele was re-elected to a second six-year term at the head of a multi-party coalition that included the Fruit and other major parties. A loose coalition of opposition parties again boycotted the election. Currently, political power is shared by a Somali president and an Afar prime minister, with an Afar career diplomat as foreign minister and other cabinet posts roughly divided. However, ISIS are predominate in the government, civil service, and the ruling party. That, together with a shortage of non-government employment, has bred resentment and continued political competition between the Issa Somalis and the Afars. In March 2006, Djibouti held its first regional elections and began implementing a decentralization plan. The broad pro-government coalition, including fruit candidates, again ran unopposed when the government refused to meet opposition preconditions for participation. In the 2008 elections, the opposition union for a presidential majority party boycotted the election, leaving all 65 seats to the ruling RPP. Voter turnout figures were disputed. Gele was re-elected in the 2011 presidential election. Due to its strategic location at the mouth of the Bab al-Mandeb gateway to the Red Sea and the Suez Canal, Djibouti also hosts various foreign military bases. Camp Lemonnier is a United States naval expeditionary base, situated at Djibouti and Bouli International Airport and home to the Combined Joint Task Force, Horn of Africa of the U-South Africa Command. In 2011, Japan also opened a local naval base staffed by 180 personnel to assist in marine defense. This initiative is expected to generate $30 million in revenue for the Djiboutian government. Thanks for watching.